Today I want to share with you the easy way to make cheese sauce with no roux required. Hi sweet friends, I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient-dense foods like bone broth, ferment, sourdough, and more. So if you enjoy learning about those things, consider subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to click on the little notification bell below. That'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Well, making this cheese sauce couldn't be easier. And don't worry if you don't know how to make a roux because it's not required. If you're not familiar with the terminology of the word roux, what it means is to take your flour and your butter and to cook it first for about two minutes or so to cook off the raw flavor of the flour. But this sometimes can be a little challenging, especially to the new cook who's not sure, did I cook it enough? Did I not cook it enough? Did it get browned when it wasn't supposed to be browned? And so on and so forth. So that's the great thing about this recipe. You don't have to worry about any of that. Now, why in the first place would we want to make cheese sauce homemade when you can buy it at the grocery store? Well, really two reasons. Number one, whenever you make something homemade, it's generally going to be less expensive. And number two, it's going to have more wholesome ingredients. To give you an example, at my local grocery store, I saw two cheese sauces, one of which did have a little bit of cheese in it, but it also had a lot of ingredients, many of which I couldn't pronounce. And the other quote unquote cheese sauce that I saw didn't even have any cheese in it. It was a combination of oils, either canola oil or soybean oil, which are highly processed oils, corn syrup, and some food coloring to give it the orange color. So I don't think we want any of that in our traditional foods kitchen. Well, let's go over all the ingredients that we're going to need to make this cheese sauce. But don't worry, you don't need to write anything down because if you open the description under this video, you'll see the word recipe. Click on that link and that'll take you over to my website, Mary's Nest, same name as my YouTube channel, where you can read the recipe online or print it out. Now I'm going to be making just a little over one cup of cheese sauce. You can certainly double, triple, even quadruple this recipe if you want to make a lot of cheese sauce. And this is a very versatile cheese sauce. You can use this to top some veggies with. You can mix it with rice, which is absolutely delicious. You can use it in place of hollandaise sauce on top of eggs. You can use it as a base for queso. There's all sorts of things you can do. And I'll explain all of this in detail in the corresponding blog post that'll go along with this video. And you can definitely use this cheese sauce to make mac and cheese. Now the first ingredient that you're going to need is one cup of milk. Now I'm using whole milk because I think that makes the creamiest cheese sauce, but you can use one of the lower fat milks, but I would steer clear of fat free or skim milk. Next, you're going to need two tablespoons of flour, but we're going to talk about the flour in detail in a minute. So I'm just going to set that aside for a second while we go over the rest of the ingredients. Next, you're going to need a quarter teaspoon of salt. Now, you can also add pepper as well. I don't because I like to add a little secret ingredient to my cheese sauce, which I'll explain in a minute. But if you add pepper, you may want to go with white pepper. And if you do add pepper, you really only need about an eighth of a teaspoon because you don't want the spice to overwhelm your cheese sauce, especially if you're going to be using it uh, to drizzle over vegetables or using a mac and cheese uh, or on top of eggs or other recipes like that. You really want the flavor of the cheese to shine through. Next, you're going to need two tablespoons of butter, and then you're also going to want a half a cup of grated cheese. Now, I recommend that you grate your own cheese. Don't buy grated cheese at the grocery store. Number one, if you grate your own cheese, it's going to be less expensive. But also, grated cheese in the grocery store is often tossed with different things so that it doesn't stick together in the package. And that can sometimes interfere uh, with creating a truly creamy sauce. And when it comes to choosing the cheese to use to make your cheese sauce, I highly recommend that you pick a cheese that's not been aged for a very long time. Cheeses that have been aged for a long time tend to create a more grainy cheese sauce. And you want your cheese sauce to be nice and smooth. Now what I've got here is a half a cup of grated mild cheddar cheese. You could also use medium cheddar cheese, you could use Monterey cheese, you could use Colby cheese, you could use any combination of those cheeses. They all work very well and melt very well and create a very nice creamy cheese sauce. 
But all of these cheeses that I've mentioned also have a very mild flavor. Now, what if you want to kick up the flavor of your cheese sauce a little bit? As I mentioned earlier, you can add a little white pepper. Just don't overdo it. Now, even though mild cheddar, as the name implies, has a mild flavor, as does medium cheddar, as does Colby, as does the Monterey, they still have a nice flavor. And that's why I always never like to overwhelm them, even though they are mild. But what I like to do that I find adds the perfect amount of flavoring that almost gives a boost to these cheeses is to add a little dry mustard powder. And you don't need much. All I have here is a quarter of a teaspoon to make this about a cup or so of cheese sauce. So this is kind of my secret ingredient. Alrighty, now I want to take a minute to talk about the flour and why we don't need to make a roux with this flour and butter. We're actually going to go ahead and put the milk, the flour, the salt, and the butter all into the saucepan in one fell swoop. But what allows us to do that if we're using flour? Don't we need to cook off the raw flour taste? Well, you've got two options when it comes to being able to make this cheese sauce without a roux. One is using Wondra flour. And this is not a sponsored video. This is just a product I really like to use whenever I make cheese sauce or gravy. And this is pretty common. You should see this in the aisle at your grocery store where all the other flours are sold. I think pretty much every grocery store, at least across the United States, will sell this. It's been around, I believe, since about the 1960s. Now, some people may also know this as instant flour. And basically what Wondra flour is, is a flour that's been pre-cooked, then dried, and then ground very fine. So it makes it perfect for whenever you want to make something where you don't necessarily want to have to be worried about making a roux. You can just throw everything in together and it'll dissolve and work like a charm. Now don't worry if you don't have Wondra flour or you can't find this at your grocery store. There is another way to use flour to make this cheese sauce so you don't have to make the roux. What you can do is take one cup of all-purpose flour and a half a teaspoon of cornstarch and you're going to mix that together really well and then you're going to use a mesh strainer and you're going to sift it twice. And if you want to make it super fine, you can run it through your blender or a food processor for about 30 seconds. But you don't have to do that if you don't have those. Don't worry. Sifting it twice through a mesh strainer will work great. Now, something I want you to keep in mind is that Wondra is a low protein flour. So if you can find cake flour at your grocery store, which is also a low protein flour, you can use cake flour and the cornstarch, and this will work really great. But don't worry if you can't find cake flour. The all-purpose flour will still work well. The, what you don't want to use is bread flour because that's a higher protein flour. So you have options here, and I'll have all of this laid out for you in the printable recipe. So now we can start making our cheese sauce. All we're going to do is take our milk and we're going to pour this right into our saucepan. And then we're going to go ahead and I'll go ahead and put in this salt. And then we're going to go ahead and put in our flour. And I've got the two tablespoons of the Wonder flour and now the two tablespoons of butter. And all we're going to do at this point is bring this up to a boil. And I've got a whisk, but if you have a spoon, that'll work too, or a spatula. And as this comes up to a boil, we're going to just keep stirring it, and we're just going to let it boil for one minute. Well, I brought this up to a boil, and I just kept stirring it for one minute. And now I'm going to turn this off, and I'm going to remove this from the heat. And you will see how this has thickened considerably over that minute while you're stirring it. Now, off the heat, I'm going to go ahead and add in my mustard powder. Now I'm just going to go ahead and stir that mustard powder in real well with our sauce. Now I'm going to start adding in our cheese little by little and just mixing it in and allowing it to melt. But we're doing this off the heat and this is very important. Not only is picking the right cheese important, uh, having the cheese melt in the hot white sauce 
off the heat is important too to prevent the development of any graininess in your cheese sauce. Well, that first part of the cheese has melted beautifully. This cheese sauce is coming along really nicely. Now I'm just going to go ahead and put in the rest of the grated cheese. Well, I've got the last of that cheese incorporated in, and this just looks glorious. Well, now let's give it a taste. I'm going to just take a little bit here and put some on a little piece of broccoli, and then I'll also taste it off the spoon as well to see the level of smoothness that we got. But I think it's going to be good. Mmm, it's perfect. Oh, and that little bit of mustard powder, I think you're going to really like it. It just brings all the flavors together. Alrighty, let's try it on the broccoli. Nothing like broccoli with cheese sauce. Mmm. Mmm. Delicious. Now, if you'd like to learn how to make more homemade items where I show you the easy way to make these things, be sure to click on this video over here where I show you how to make cottage cheese and cream cheese and homemade crackers, cereal, apple cider vinegar, all sorts of things. And I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.